All right, it's a new day with fresh energy, and we're back out here in the garage and picking up right where we were before, where we had just finished uh, getting the distributor shaft and that grease zerk lubricated. Next in line is the cam bearing wick um, and the distributor cam itself, where you're going to do a little bit of uh, lightweight oil, 10 weight oil on the wick. And then uh, on the cam itself, just a little bit of uh, cloth or paper towel in this case with some petroleum jelly on it, but we're not going to do very much. Again, it only takes a little bit to uh, lubricate these, and you don't want grease and oil flying around in your distributor. So here, uh, I doubt I would lose my orientation, but I, I did put a little bit of soapstone mark on there just to make sure that I get things put back exactly the way they are. I don't think there's enough... Uh, slack to flip this uh, distributor um, cap around but these are the bales that go over it one on that side one on this side right here flip them off kind of gently lay that off to the side here's the rotor in the top and I know the position of the rotor um, I guess on some cars, depending on how things are put together, you can get things put backwards, but I'm noting that position, and this is keyed as well, so it's going to wind up going right back on the way it did. So let me get this rotor put off to the side safely. And that little bit right there in the center is a wick. Yeah, there it is. And that just gets two or three drops of oil. And then on the uh, cam surface that goes around here, and then bumps the uh, breaker point arm there, you can uh, put just a little bit of uh, petroleum jelly on there with a cloth. Um, it only takes a tiny, tiny amount. Again, you really can't have any grease flying around uh, off and getting onto your uh, breaker points there and messing up your ignition. So uh, less is more in the oiling, I'm sure, here. So I'll get my cloths out here, clean everything up, and use just the bare minimum oil that you need to get it done. So now I'm up top looking down on the cranking motor. That is the cranking motor right there. And uh, it's got a couple more lubrication points that you need to go through on it. Kind of hard to get to, to be honest, but uh, I'll see if I can get to touching them right there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so right here, those are just some pins and a little oil. One, two. You kind of make a point. Like, that's connected to the plunger that goes into the cranking motor that you don't try to lubricate that. If you see it sticking out, don't, don't try to oil it up. Just put a little bit of oil there. Uh, on the pins so that they don't get seized up and uh, let's back out a little bit there and then down there is that spring mounted fulcrum right there and that gets some oil too and uh, they were definitely a little bit dry so I'm glad I did that and that's uh, all that there is to the cranking motor lubrication <sighs> I have to take a moment and point out again just how cool this uh, shop manual is for the car. Uh, they don't make them, I don't think, for, for cars and, and sell them pre as readily as what they did back then. And uh, You sure have a lot of things really nicely laid out for you to do your own maintenance here. Um, I'll just focus in on the manual here and you can see how a nice diagram they give you there of your uh, Cranking motor shows you right where to do that oiling we just did. Really good pictures down here uh, of your distributor. Battery, where the water goes up to the bottom of the well and that notch is cut there so that you can let gases escape while it's uh, charging up. Uh, nice diagram over here of the layout of your automatic transmission and your uh, uh, crankcase uh, oil gauge rod up there for anybody who had just bought the car. 
just a really well laid out manual, totally worth the money, and I wish every card that was sold had something this good with it, but they don't do it like they used to, and that's why I got this car, that's part of the, the neatness of it. Well, next on the lubrication list is the, uh, I'm underneath the vehicle here now, looking up at the generator. I thought maybe I might have to uh, lubricate the generator bearings like it says from the uh, underside, but it's probably something that has to be done from the top. But while I was under here, I got to looking closer, and as you can see, if I zero in on it there, that is the... Uh, kind of main belt here uh, running the generator and water pump and everything and we have oh I don't know what might have happened there it's either uh, it was slipping and getting hot there or just sat for a very long time with too much tension on it I well I won't won't know exactly whatever happened to it there but that is a uh, that's a replacement fan belt for sure that's that'll be coming off of there and I'll go topside and see if this is even the original uh, generator to the car and if it has uh, bearings that need oiled or if it's more of a modern generator that uh, has you know, self-sealed bearings and you don't do any more maintenance to it. Let's go up top and uh, flip the hood to the other side and take a look down in there. So before I go and um flip the uh, hood so that it tilts the other way on the car uh, because it does that I mean I can close this hood on this side and I can tip it up from the other it uh, kind of locks on and then grabs um, through an access in the venti ports the, the, the portholes in here onto this latch right here and this latch right here is really stiff and it took a while for me to figure out the mechanism down there, but I don't know if I can get on it again to show, but uh, I do not believe this is going to wind up showing very easily for anybody, but uh, let's see here. There is uh, nothing but a pivot point right there. Uh, the white light makes it too hard to see, but it just is going to take some engine oil on there, and I think that this pivot will start to loosen up and start going a lot smoother. For whatever reason, uh, just from the age or where it's located, this one operates pretty darn stiff, and it's a uh, pair right over there is uh, nice and loose and goes easy. And then in addition, I notice there's a little pin right here just to kind of line everything up when it's in there. That probably gets a little bit of uh, uh, grease uh, on there. And I'll just put some engine oil on the pivots on the underside there. And I think we'll have this operating a lot smoother. And then we'll get this uh, hood pivoted to the other side. And I can take a better look at that generator over there. I just can't get to it uh, from this side of the car. All right, that's certainly a lot better. <laughs> One finger operation, and you now the beauty of this car again is I was just able to lie underneath there on the cement below and look straight up and see what I was working on. I've never had this much room to work on a vehicle before. It's kind of like being spoiled, really. The same way it went for this side, I was able to just get into the car and put some oil directly on the pivots, and now these guys are working pretty much like they said should and this is almost to the point now it's pretty pretty well rusted underneath there but it's loosened up real good and it's just about to the point where it'll go back down on its own so that's nice so good let's get this hood flipped over to the other side now well I'm wanting to flip the hood but I just can't get past doing this at this point is I noticed that uh, in addition to the bottom mechanism, the top mechanism, which is really fascinating to me here, uh, has a lock. So you can lock the hood down on one side when you uh, pivot it from the other. And uh, the locking mechanism is kind of an interesting uh, bar. There's a quite a bit of internal parts there, but 
if I uh, spin it here, you can see how there's several different linkages that result in that bar there either coming closed or open. And this bar actually continues all the way down there if you can see it moving back and forth. <laughs> I'll see if my arms can stretch to uh, that guy right there. But uh, all these pivots and uh, parts in here have not been greased forever or at least in a terribly long time. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of friction points in there and it's a little tight but I bet with uh, a little bit of chassis lube on there it'll uh, operate a whole lot better and uh, probably make it easier to move it uh, each time I uh, move the hood uh, and close it there. So better do that now get this uh, get this hood going um, lubed up and, and making it easier to get from each both sides. And then it looks to me like also right right there there's another kind of a well, I guess I'd probably call that a guide or a little friction point right there to help uh, keep the hood lined up where it's supposed to go and I'll put a little bit of lube on there too so a little more work to do before we get over to the generator. Alright, here we are on the flip side of the hood and uh, I've done a little more same repeat of all the lubrication up on here, all the points where the rod goes down here and it's the very same mechanism where a rod comes down here and I did that a little fast but anyway this rod here comes down and it uh, hooks on the underside of these hinges and these hinges have been oiled and this has been greased and it seems to be moving much much better and uh, now we can get to the what we actually started off to do here which is to try to get to the uh, generator and there's the generator right here this entire thing and right there if I zero in on it real good there's a little uh, flip up oil cap let's see if I can I'm not doing a very good job of showing that am I oh, there it is a little flip up oil cap and you just flip that up right there put a few drops of engine oil down in that and then on the other side it's a little hard to see but uh, if I can find my hand there it is same thing right there a little, little flip up cap right there put a few drops of engine oil down in there and close it up and we're done so that's what I'll do well, there we're a little more discovery as I was uh, looking around the car here I finally figured out <laughs> where the uh, where is it there it is uh, yeah right there that is the uh, I do believe the windshield wiper fluid jar reservoir whatever we want to call it that I really didn't think that we had it's so dirty and well it's broken down there as well with a tube that goes um, which surprises me this tube comes up from the jar and in through this hole right here and disappears into who knows where to be able to get to what I'm guessing <laughs> is the uh, wipers so bonus we uh, found the uh, windshield wiper fluid system that'll be interesting to see how well that works hmm the jar no clue if this jar was original to the car or was a replacement from who knows when. Don't know how old that hose is or what type of shape this is, but I'll see if I can get that jar off there nonetheless. It's kind of nifty. I don't think I see any writing on it. I don't know how I would determine if it's uh, original or not. 
interesting. It just kind of lays down in that uh, basket right down in there. I'm surprised it wouldn't break just from the rattling around. There must have been some type of shock absorber or rubber or something I would think that would have gone at, around it. Of course, this could be a replacement jar too. I have no idea what size it is. Hmm. Well, yay. And uh, without damaging myself, I was able to get that old jar off. It's kind of interesting. It has a little filling uh, slide left, slide right. Just fill that up. Pour your new fluid in. A tube that actually still has uh, the screen intact on the underside there. Oh, there it went. My uh, incredibly secure hose connection. <laughs> and uh, one original jar. Five sixty-five. Huh, can't see those numbers on there. Wonder if that's a standard size jar or not. I'll have to take that inside and see if anything else even comes close to that, or if that's an unusual mouth fitting size on there. Anyway, more to discover, more interesting stuff showing up in the car all the time. And that's probably a good point to stop this little segment. So call it a night and uh, pick it up again tomorrow or the day after.